Hi, welcome to Glow's Kinder Kitchen and I'm Glow. Well, today is kind of a rainy, cold day outside and um, so we were trying to decide what we would like for dinner tonight. And Richard suggested that I make this Italian soup that I make with rice in it. And it'll be perfect because I have some vegetables I needed to use up from the refrigerator before they went bad. And so this is a great soup. It's kind of like a minestrone soup in a way, but instead of pasta with it, we put rice. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I do is I take one link of Italian sausage, which is right here, and I remove the casing. I did put a smidgen of baking soda over that and sprinkled a tiny bit of water. What that does is that actually will tenderize this sausage even more and it makes it very soft and it's just delicious in soup that way. So I have my pot here starting to heat. I've got it on medium low. I'm going to turn it up to a five, which is medium to start with. And I'm going to put in the sauteing olive oil with it. You can already hear it starting to sizzle there. And I put in barely enough to cover. It's not quite covered and that'll be fine for right now to start. We'll probably add more in a little bit. So uh, what I did is besides that, I have a half a cup of long grain rice. And then I have in here half of a, a yellow onion that I diced up. I've got about a third of a green pepper. And then I have a quarter of a leek, or not a leek, I'm sorry, fennel. And fennel comes in a bulb, and I wish I had had a whole bulb so I could show you what it's like, but it's just like a bulb and then it has a long part on it, and sometimes that long stalk is not on the fennel when you purchase it in the store. I try to find it with it because I like the fronds that are on that as a garnish and also it adds great flavor. But all I had left was a half of a bulb, and I'm using a quarter of that bulb in this recipe, and then I'll use the other part for another recipe this week. There's some celery in here as well. Um, I believe that's it. You said you like the what on the fennel? The fond? Oh, the frond. It's, um, it almost looks like dill, if you will, as it's growing. Um, oh, okay. It's real feathery, and it's delicious. And if you've never had fennel before in the fresh bulb, it still tastes like licorice, especially if you put it in a salad or something. But if you roast it, it turn, takes on a whole nother flavor. And when we brown it in this um, olive oil, along with these other things, that's gonna take it down. You're still gonna have a slight licorice flavor, but not like what you would normally have in a salad. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this Italian sausage right in here. Get that going. Spoon here. There we go. And this really is not an expensive soup to make at all because you're only using one link of the Italian sausage and usually when you buy it it comes in with with five links I believe it is and um, quite often in our stores you can even get it buy one get one um, but it goes a long way when you're using it in a dish like this and with the price of food today you got to really think about what you're doing with your um, food so anyway, I'm going to put all of our veggies right in there. And I included the leaves from the celery. I think it adds some great flavor. I can already start to smell the Italian sausages that's cooking in there. So anyway, um, there was one rib of celery in there the half of the onion, about a third of a, a green pepper chopped up, and then a quarter of a bulb of the fennel. So I'm going to let this cook. This will take about three minutes, and then we'll go ahead and um, actually at this point, I'm going to add as well the rice. 
This is a half a cup of long grain rice. Because And the reason I'm doing that is I want that rice to brown along with this stuff. It's going to give it a nice toasty flavor and um, kind of a nutty flavor. And why I'm stir the reason I'm stirring this is I want all of those long grains of rice to get some of that oil on it. And that will help it from sticking together and it'll also help it to get nice and toasty and nutty. So anyway, I'll be back probably in about three or four minutes and we'll go on to the next step. All right, well, look down in here at our pot. This has been going about five minutes actually. And the rice is getting toasted and the veggies are starting to cook down. You can see how it's browning nicely. See the brown yes, there does, in the bottom of the pan? It does look good and smell yeah, good. Yeah, it smells really good. Mm -mm. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I took one clove of garlic and I smashed it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. The reason I didn't put it in before now is I don't want it to burn. Because garlic, when it burns, takes on a real bitter taste and you don't want that. So overcook it, no. We don't and want here that. I have my herbs. I have uh, marjoram, of about a quarter of a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon of thyme, and then uh, oregano, one teaspoon, and rosemary, a half a teaspoon. And I, um, for the rosemary and the thyme, I put that through my hands to get it going because those two herbs seem to need that, uh, that it's like a starter, like a, yeah, like a friction to get them going because they've been dried. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Be, be careful there, Miss Paul. And also there's a little nutmeg in here and a little bit of cinnamon. The cinnamon was a mistake. I thought I had my nutmeg, but I'm fine with that. When I was younger, if I had done something like that, I'd been flipping out and starting all over. But I don't do that no, anymore. No, you can't afford to start over. Well, and also cinnamon will go real well with this. Yes, it will. Oh, now it's really smelling good. Mm-hmm. And this only takes a, a you know a minute or so to waken up those um, herbs that are in here. And you're getting real happy. You can smell them. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tomatoes. And I have one pint of um, home canned tomatoes, the whole tomatoes, but they will cook right down. I think I have some more pork of those. Not very many. I wish I had more. But they're, they are so good. When you can tomatoes, when they're super, super ripe, you can't go wrong. They're just delicious. So there we go. And then I have one and a half cups of tomato juice. And I'm going to pour that in here. And then to that, I'm going to put some water just to rinse out my measuring cups here and then um, also that'll be good for the rice to help that cook because you need a good cup of water for that rice so I probably put in let's see what size is this I probably put in about three and a half cups of water okay so let's stir that together <clears throat> And what I'm doing right now is getting up the tidbits that are stuck on the bottom, like that rice and the brown bits. But you gotta be careful when you're doing that so it doesn't splash all over. Now I've got a pan, or can, a pan. I got a can of garbanzo beans, the chi chi beans. I'm gonna put that in here, liquid and all. You can put any kind of bean you wanted in this. You could do the can of lily beans, or you could do kidney beans. You could do a mixture. Whatever you have on hand would be fine. I'm going to put in, to start with, about a teaspoon of the chicken broth. This is the bouillon, rather. But I'm going to put in some onion powder, a couple of good shakes. Same with garlic powder. Just going to add some nice flavor. 
I'm going to put in, oh, I'd say about a teaspoon of, of sugar. And a half a cup of dry red wine. Of course. And that wine helps with the acidity of the tomatoes. Uh, the two go really well together. So now this soup, um, if you wanted to eat this quickly, it, this takes about 45 minutes. But the longer it sets here and cooks, the better it gets, just like anything with soup. So we're going to have this cook probably for a good three hours, and um, this will be enough meals for us for two or three meals probably. But it is so yummy. So, uh, oh, one other thing I forgot is the paprika. <clears throat> That's probably like a quarter of a teaspoon and a little bit of red pepper flakes. I'm not going to put a lot in to start with. We'll see what it tastes like after it all gets together here. And then I have a quarter of a small zucchini. I'm going to put that in here. And the reason I didn't saute that in here is I didn't want that to get all broken up. So it looks like I got everything in here. So this is going to um, go ahead and once this comes up to a good simmer, I'm going to turn it down to low and I'm going to let this cook for a couple hours and I'll be back and we'll see what it looks like and tastes like. Hi, well this has been cooking now for about five minutes. I forgot to put my bay leaf in so I'm going to go ahead and just set that right in there. And see how the um, water starting or the broth is starting to break there on the soup. So I'm going to yes, turn that yes. down to low now, and then I'm going to put a cover on it. Now, I, uh, one thing I should share with you too. Let me get it out here. <clears throat> My burners tend to cook hot, so I bought this. Uh, actually, Richard found this at a place we were at a few years ago, and it's a diffuser. So if it tends to cook too hot, I'm going to put this under the pot on directly on the burner and then put the pot on top and keep it on low and that way it'll be a real low simmer. But as of at the moment, I don't need it, but if I do, that's what we'll do. That's a handy thing to have. Oh, they're awesome. It's like the lowest simmer you can get and you don't have to worry about your uh, pot boiling over or scorching or anything. It's awesome. So I wish I had known about that years ago. So anyway, I'm going to just stir this a little bit, and then we'll put the top on, the lid, and we'll be set to go. It's smelling good. It does smell good, Miss Chloe. Well. So anyway, I'll be back in a couple of hours. See you then. Well, our soup's been going for here now for about an hour and a half, and let's take a look at it. At this mm. point, you could really go right ahead and eat it. It's a bubbler. But look how nice that rice and everything looks good. And Oh, it looks so good. We have decided um, that tonight we're going to add some green beans and some corn to it. So I'm going to go ahead and add the corn. That's probably about between a half a cup and three quarters of a cup. And then the same amount of the green beans. That's a nice thing about soups. You can put in whatever you think would be, you know, go well in it. And I think these two will go very well in this. Um, it's I put green beans in my uh, minestrone soup, and I, I don't think remember was there corn in that one. In the, the minestrone? minestrone, I have never put corn in my minestrone, so. but uh, corn goes very well with tomato, and um, also all these herbs that are in here. So I can't see why it wouldn't go well. So anyway, we're going to let this continue to cook now, and um, we'll be back in about an hour, and we'll see what it looks like and tastes like. Well, our soup has been busy cooking here, and it has been on the stove now for three and a half hours. So let's check and see what it's like. Looks good. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I have been using the diffuser on it for the last couple of hours because it was... Um, Getting too hot? Yeah. Look at that. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Yeah, it really does. I'm ready to eat. So I'm going to put a little on my spoon just to taste it. 
see if we need to add any additional seasonings at all. Don't burn your lips. That smells good. Mmm. That is delicious. The only thing I'm going to add is some black pepper because we haven't added that yet. I'm not going to add any salt to it. I don't know if you realize, but throughout this, the only thing I put in here that had the salt was the chicken bouillon. And uh, one of the reasons is, is we're going to be garnishing this with cheese, Parmesan and uh, sharp cheddar. So I really don't want to put any salt in it at this point. If we feel like we need salt after we put the cheese on it, then we can do it at that time. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Here, let me get rid of that spoon. I'm just going to put it across the top and just sprinkle it on. And that's probably enough. I'm going to stir it in. Oh, that looks so yummy. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's a nice thick soup and perfect for a, you know, a night like this where it's very chilly out. It's so wet and cold. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm going to get a um, couple of bowls for us to try, and then I'll be back to taste test it for us. Hi. Well, we put the soup in a bowl, and just look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? It does, Miss Cologne. And as you can see... Smells good. Yes, it does. And as you can tell, this is a very easy soup to put together. And you just use what you have in your refrigerator. Um, that's what it's all about for a soup like this. So anyway, I'm going to take a taste of it. We'll see. Mmm. Very good. Here's one of the, the um, garbanzo beans there, too. Looks good. Can't wait to try it. Mm -mm. The seasonings are perfect. Let's see if I can get a piece of corn here. It's hot. It's so yep, good. Don't burn yourself. It's so good. There's a, just a hint of sweetness with the corn and that little bit of sugar I put in it. And the green beans are good in it. Those garbanzo beans, they are so creamy. And the rice, that rice, just let's see if you can see it. It's nice and yes. thick and it's yes, very good. It looks good. Yep. Mmm, and those herbs. Some of you may want to add. A little bit of salt to it, for me, it's perfect. But I'm one that doesn't really like a lot of salt. I've worked on that for the years, not to have so much salt in my diet. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have, please give me a like, a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel do, uh, yet, please do. I really appreciate you watching, and thank you, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.